G'day folks, I'm Brent Carter, this is Wine for the People, and it is time to deep dive into one of the most heralded grape varieties of all time, Riesling. Now, I'll admit to you, I find this variety both delicious and intimidating because it's com complex. And to be honest, I find German words really, really hard to pronounce. The more I actually learn about Riesling, the more I feel that I know absolutely nothing about Riesling at all. I think this is what they call the Dunning-Kruger effect, actually. Anyway, let's dive into the basics. Riesling is a white grape variety that finds a very comfortable home in Germany, where it's largely planted in the Moselle Valley, the Pfalz, Rheinhessen, Rheingau, and the Nahe. More broadly, Riesling is one of the more globally planted varieties with significant presence across France, Austria, Slovenia, North Italy, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, America, but basically everywhere. Although it tends to find the most success in cooler climates, where soils are more slate or sand clay based, like sandy clays. Now, we don't actually know how Riesling got its name, there's all sorts of conjecture around whether it's got something to do with the Ritzling River in the, the Wachau in Austria, or perhaps a specific German vernacular such as Reisen, meaning to split or to carve. My own completely unresearched opinion here is that a lot of grape varieties typically have very pragmatic agricultural origins, and one merely has to look at many German vineyards to know that the grapes that grow on the carvings of the hillsides tend to be Riesling. Maybe the towel wagged the dog in that instance. Just a thought. Anyway, Riesling winemaking is actually relatively straightforward. Typically, grapes are quickly pressed to avoid phenolics prior to longer, cold ferments and little in the way of winemaker artifice. There's not a lot of badinage or oak maturation here. Now, yes, I can hear you in the comments. There are outliers, like I am aware, the big Fudra that they're famous for in Germany, but I think you get my drift. These Fudras are pretty old. And the fascination really here is to put the, the grape and soil under the metaphorical microscope, not so much the winemaker. Now what's immensely more interesting and impressive is how Riesling is grown. It's an absolute beast in the cold. Super hardy. It tolerates conditions that would fry most other varieties. It's this particular hardiness that actually helps it deliver really healthy yields in some of the most challenging spots. And I mean, really challenging spots. Just look at some of the gradients and slopes that Riesling are planted on in Europe. In these parts of the world, you don't traipse through the vineyard. You bloody have to hike the damn thing. Hell, even wineries have resorted to installing monorail systems to transport themselves and grapes to and from the winery. Now, couple that with the fact that Riesling is typically quite late ripening, often being left out after uh, botrytis has set in and even snow has set in, making the harvesting of these vineyards both jolly good fun, but also the results of which are quite astronomical. Europeans, man, they're absolutely nuts. Now, no deep dive into Riesling would be complete without mentioning something really crucial the German wine classification. <laughs> and if there was ever any evidence that the Germans love organization, it's perfectly showcased in the Qualitätswein Bestimmter and Bauge and Bauge and, and, and Bauge, otherwise known as the QBA. Now this is a total work of art in which German wines, and many of them being Riesling, are organized and sorted by quality, region, ripeness, and sweetness. It's utterly remarkable and often leaves people both speechless and utterly confused. But if you're a Riesling nerd, then this is your ultimate up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. Yes, the QBA is the Konami code of Riesling and will help you navigate the pitfalls and side quests that this variety will ultimately lead you down. I'm not gonna go so far into the, the, the QBA system right now because the video will probably end up being about an hour long. But if you're keen to hear more, jump in the comments and we'll make it happen. Now, arguably, Riesling is the king, queen, jack, and dunce of the aromatic white category. And if you're looking to improve your odds of impressing your elderly neighbor by calling it out in a blind tasting lineup, it's actually pretty simple. Firstly, the look. Typically, it'll be bright white in color. It'll basically resemble water and it'll have crystal brilliant clarity. It is hardly ever cloudy or opalescent unless in really super niche examples. The smell, it ranges from fresh lemon and lime peel to sherbet and grapefruit, and in some instances it can appear a little vegetal or sweaty in sort of where it's in a more phenolically ripe circumstance. Not a bad thing, just something to keep in mind that'll often be that final little bit of data to get you over the line. Now this is where it gets really, really, really interesting. The palate, more often than not, will be bone dry, but it could be sweet too. I understand that's confusing as all heck. I'll come 
come back to it. Let's focus on the acidity though. It'll be bracing, electric, linear, mouth-watering and vibrant. Often it feels like the wine has a sort of nervous twitchiness to it. And if you're an acid head, Riesling is 100% your vibe. This is important because regardless of the sweetness, the acidity will always be there. It's a hallmark of this variety. Now, if you've got a bone dry wine and you've ticked all the above boxes, the odds are you're in Riesling territory. But if it's a sweet wine, you can almost be 100% guaranteed that this is gonna be Riesling or you have something niche and esoteric in which you should secretly unfriend and wage a passive aggressive war on the fool that dared to trick you. If you're keen to get cracking on a Riesling fueled adventure and after something that'll pique your interest, I'd actually suggest you look towards Clare Valley in South Australia, particularly the Rieslings from John Hughes, AKA the Riesling Freak. His number two Polish Hill River Riesling is utterly stunning and puts to bed any doubts that you might have about New World wine. In a similar vein, you could go more cold climate and you'll be rewarded. Either New Zealand or I actually like New York's Finger Lakes regions. They're utterly phenomenal Rieslings. Herman J. Weimer and Living Roots Wine Co. are two that I highly recommend. And if you're looking for an all out foot to the floor experience, head to Germany, pick up a bottle of JJ Prum and anything with a gold capsule, also known as gold capsule, literally, you'll have an utterly amazing experience. Now, I admit for all the Riesling nerds out there, like myself, there are plenty of things that I have glossed over in this video. But if you think it's worth expanding on anything in particular, jump into the comments below. We'll get cracking on a follow-up. And until then, I'm gonna be here. We're gonna be here, slaving away for likes and thumbs ups. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.